Today News Update. A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Tuesday, June 7th. Thanks for joining us. The Court of Appeal today upheld the conviction of campus trend killer Jamar Dwayne Bino. A however order that Bino was sentenced to hang has to return to the High Court for sentencing. Bino, formerly of Headley's Land Bank Hall St. Michael, was found guilty in July 2016 for the murder of six women in the campus trends fire. He appealed the conviction, but the court ruled today that it found no merit in the appeal. In other news this Tuesday, a fresh batch of Cuban medical personnel arrived here this evening to support the delivery of health care. The team was welcomed at the Granley Adams International Airport by Minister of State in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Sonia Brown, Cuban Ambassador to Barbados, Sergio Jorge Pastrena, and other officials. We are in need definitely of specialized personnel in the healthcare system. Right now we are short of specialized nurses and to some extent doctors. And we have welcomed today some, at least the last number was supposed to be about 70 people from Cuba with various specialties. We have four doctors, um, ICU trained, um, lab specialists four, and the others comprise nurses with different specialties, pediatrics, um, and NICU, SICU, MICU training. Um, so we are grateful for that. It's needed in Barbados, at least for Milton, we can build out our own supply. The Cuban ambassador says his country is ready to serve. We are, we are happy that we are able to bring this help because we have trained a big cadre of doctors and nurses in Cuba. And uh, it has been asked many times, how many? And uh, mm -hmm. it was an idea of Fidel Castro that was asked that same question and he said there will never be enough. So the idea is that they are trained and they are ready to serve whatever is needed. And uh, in this case, uh, these uh, 70 specialists that we just received today come after the visit of our 126 that we had until last week. But it's open to the need that Barbados might have in terms of specialized personnel. Mm -hmm. And uh, this will fluctuate in, in depending on the needs and on the request of the Barbados government. For us, it is a, a pleasure and we're happy to be able to help with that, uh, with uh, the long tradition of cooperation and relations between Barbados and Cuba. The Caribbean's push for reparations is on pause, but it's not going away. Prime Minister Mia Motley made this clear during an appearance at the Time 100 Summit today. Motley, who was recently named among the world's 100 most influential people, said it's not the right time to start a discussion in light of the war in Ukraine, but the Caribbean's case remains strong. And we have to ask ourselves, can we accept that the Industrial Revolution was financed by the blood, sweat, and tears and money of developing countries, and at the same time causes the climate crisis today. And it's a case of double jeopardy. So we had the wealth taken from us, and now we are facing the consequences of that wealth's impact on the Earth's climate. It's wrong, just simply wrong. Prime Minister Motley reiterated concerns about the climate crisis and the severe impact of the Russian war on developing economies. She maintained that the world cannot continue to turn a blind eye to these challenges. We have a number of global problems and unless we can find global solutions to global problems and finance them globally, they will become problems to even those who think they're insulated from them. And, and that's kind of where we are um, at, at today's point. And we need not only leaders in government, but we need ordinary people, ordinary people creating the noise and creating the pressure in order to move the needle in domestic governments such that internationally we can have global financing for global public goods. We can ensure that the world is a safe place, that the world is an equitable place. Regional and international news is coming up after this short break. Cure Oxygen is way more than just water. We infuse pristine water with over one billion tiny oxygen bubbles using our state-of-the-art process. The benefits of additional oxygen are huge, from strengthening your immune system 
to increasing energy levels, stamina, and sports performance. And that's not all. It also improves skin health, helps you sleep better, and reduces stress. Join the movement of people experiencing the benefits of Cure Oxygen. It's not hype, it's science. To regional news, the Jamaica Teachers Association is voicing strong objections to the Jamaica Teachers Council bill, which it claims seeks to punish teachers. More on this report from Herman Green of Television Jamaica. 2022 Jamaica Teachers Association half-yearly meeting is a prelude to the upcoming election. However, for the leadership, including immediate past president Jasper Gabriel, now more than ever, a united association is needed. Among what they listed as challenges facing their members is the Jamaica Teaching Council Bill, which is now being discussed by a joint select committee of parliament. It seeks to create, among other things, a qualification standard for the profession and charges for breaches. The JTA is against the bill in its current form. The bill seems to be more punitive in nature. Actually, in many instances, looking for avenues and ways in which teachers can be punished. So it seems to be more punitive than developmental. For principal of the Mushet High School in Trelawney and candidate for president-elect Leighton Johnson, salary review and compensation is another threat. He suggests that the last agreed salary increase of 4% was embarrassingly low. That is water under the bridge now. We are looking to the compensation review. In 2008, that was the last time we were brought back to a, or brought in line to 80% of market. 14 years later, inflation plus the high cost of living has eroded our spending power. We will accept nothing less than being brought back to 80% of market. On the international front, the Horn of Africa is experiencing its worst drought in 40 years. In Somalia, about 800,000 people have left the countryside to seek help in camps, having lost their animals and crops. Al Jazeera's Malcolm Webb reports. When two of Abdullahi Bule Khairo's children died of hunger and thirst, he says he was left with no choice. He abandoned the only life he's ever known as a nomadic herder. He says he was caught between the armed group Al-Shabaab and worsening drought. Most of his goats and cows perished. He told us he left the last animals to die and walked with his surviving daughter, Fardosa, for three weeks to reach here, a camp for displaced people in the port city of Kismayo in Somalia. My wife lost her mind with grief. That was after we were unable to get food for our children. The last I heard, she tried to walk to Mogadishu. I don't have the strength to look for her. I don't have shelter. I don't have anything to eat. I have nothing. Abdullahi and Fardosa have joined thousands of people already in this camp. Many of them lost their animals in previous droughts and haven't been able to restock their herds. More than half of Somalis depend on herding. Livestock turned dry scrub into milk and meat that people have survived on for thousands of years. But the droughts are becoming more frequent and worse. So the camps in cities like Kismayo grow bigger. Many of the people here may never go back. It's getting harder and harder for people to survive in the countryside, but there's another food source here, the fish in the sea. And there are many decades of conflict and piracy have prevented industrial fishing. And unlike many other parts of the world, the seas here haven't been overfished. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistudy.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. Sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media Bus Terminals as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.